what's going on guys, Arix here and welcome back to yet another Division 2 video. If you guys haven't caught the one that we uploaded earlier on today, then we gave you a look at the most recent addition, the free update coming to Division tomorrow, which of course adds in a new specialization, some new story missions, and it's really cool. If you haven't checked it out, it is a specialization that gives you a flamethrower, which I have wanted for a very long time, so yeah. Definitely do check that one out. It's over on the channel, but in this video, I want to speak about the next big update for Division. They were, of course, teasing this last night. They had a stream just now, and they announced some pretty sizable changes, some pretty sizable updates. This is like a big, I guess you could kind of almost call it Division 2.0. They're pushing this in like a big new direction. They are increasing their level cap. We are returning to New York to fight in a different area. The story continues chasing Aaron Keener. There will be new gear, new weapons, new skills. Lots of new stuff, so this is more than just like a free kind of DLC update. This is a sizable, almost like a big DLC for the game. It's called the Warlords of New York, and honestly, it looks like there's a lot of cool stuff to kind of look forward to in this, and if you have maybe lapsed from Division, or maybe haven't sort of played too much, I myself, I tend to, you know, drop in whenever there's new DLC updates, and then beyond that point, you know, if there's not necessarily too much to do, then I kind of, you know, step back out. But this looks like there's going to be some sizable new stuff to kind of sink your teeth into, so in this video, I'm going to go over everything they spoke about so far. So to begin with, as mentioned, the expansion itself is called the Division 2 Warlords of New York. So, you know, it's in the title. We will, of course, be returning to New York. This time we're going back to Manhattan. So it won't just be the old area we used in Division 1. It will, of course, be new areas within New York. Of course, we're going down to lower Manhattan this time. So plenty of cool new looking areas. And, you know, from what we saw of the gameplay and the trailers they showed, there's definitely some interesting looking environments. And honestly, I really enjoyed New York. I mean, it was a nice sort of change of pace to go over to DC for Division 2, but I think overall I probably actually preferred New York as kind of a location. DC might have had some more like environmental variety, but overall Return to New York is going to be a pretty sweet thing to do. Now as part of this, there's of course been a biological attack that has hit Lower Manhattan, Aaron Keener attacked Division HQ, and he's teamed up with four other rogue agents to basically run the city and cause mayhem. Those agents are Vivian Connolly, who is a former counterterrorism and chemical engineer. There's Javier Kajika, who is a master of stealth and infiltration, used to be a hitman for the government. You have James Dragov, former police, heavy arms specialist, and Theo Parnell, who is a drone engineer and a skilled hacker. So in the kind of narrative sense, when you play through the game, of course, you will be pursuing Aaron Keener, but in order to get to him, you have to go through the warlords, so to speak. And that's, of course, how the game will be structured. You'll be chasing down those four first. And it's a rather interesting thing. We'll, of course, expand on this more in a minute. But defeating those four rogue agents won't just be like defeating a regular boss like we've done in the past and then kind of just moving on because defeating these rogue agents will actually give you new skills. They have skills that are unique to them and defeating them, progressing through will, of course, give you access to those new skills. So that's actually pretty cool. You know, having it so you don't just unlock them through like progression and just leveling up, you actually unlock them by completing aspects of the campaign, defeating these characters is is actually pretty interesting. In the gameplay, we've got a quick look at what will be our new base of operations, a place called Haven. Very important thing to note, you can pet this nice little dog or this little puppy that is uh, reason enough to play this expansion. If you don't want to do anything else, get it for this. But jokes aside, let's go over the new features they listed. So set in low Manhattan, producing a one-to-one -one scale, same thing they've always done for you know division stuff, they did the same for DC. And the first thing worth noting is they're increasing the level cap from level 30 to level 40. So one of the things worth noting is that if you are already level 30, then you'll be ready to dive straight into this content. If, however, somebody is new to the game, there will actually be the option when you start Division 2 to either start from the beginning and go through DC, or start a level 30 and jump straight into the new stuff, which is pretty cool because obviously if you want to jump into New York or just jump in with some friends who've been playing for a while, then of course this is a good chance to, you know, opt in. Additionally, once you do get to level 40, it doesn't stop there. They're introducing a new thing called the infinite progression system. Basically, this is a way to continue to improve your stats and refine your playstyle even further. It's kind of like how like in MMOs or other games, I guess even in things like Borderlands and stuff, where even once you've hit max level, you can still quote unquote level up and you can then spend those points on additional things, you know, whether that be like stats or skills or guardian ranks. So in Division, there'll of course be things that you can use to improve your agent, to further improve your stats, refine your playstyle, and basically fine tune yourself even further. 
Now, on top of this, of course, being a new expansion, there will be new gear, there will be new weapons, they said there's going to be new gear brands, there will be new gear sets, there will be new weapons, new exotics, a couple of them sort of flashed up on the screen, there was like a rather interesting looking one, they definitely sort of seem to be stepping it up a little bit with the uh, weapon designs and whatnot, so uh, definitely excited to check out some of those. They've also worked hard to sort of streamline the weapon and gear systems, the stat systems, they said they want to make it so that, you know, Division, I mean, I feel like Division 2, of course, the gear stat system was a lot easier to understand than say Division 1 which was uh, quite convoluted at the best of times but then they are trying to sort of streamline it even further to make it just easier to understand. They said attributes and advantages are easier to understand, loot will be more exciting and basically every time you loot things it should at least have some bonuses. There's a really interesting new system they're talking about called talent storage which means if you loot an item that has a talent because obviously right now you can shift talents between the items you know in the base operations but now with the talent storage if you loot an item that has a talent you can then have that in talent storage which then later on allows you to apply it to other pieces of gear. So it's just a, a lot easier. It means you don't have to like fill up your stash by holding on to umpteen pieces of gear with X different skills on it or talents on it. You can basically just ensure that if you've looted an item with that talent, it'll then be available in talent storage for you to use it later on, which is quite cool. Now, I spoke a moment ago about obtaining some of these new skills. They said that when you eliminate one of the rogue agents, you can obtain their unique skills. So the ones they spoke about were things called shock traps, which are, as a Monster Hunter player, I am very excited about. They, they kind of work exactly as they do in Monster Hunter. You throw them down, enemies can get caught in them, they get shocked, and you can link them together to shock multiple enemies. So basically, it's a means to trap people where they stand. There's also an echo-based hollow decoy that can attract enemy fire. I feel like that will probably be more useful in PvE. I can't necessarily see people falling for that in PvP, but hey, depends on how good the hologram looks. So there is, of course, that. There's going to be the explosive sticky bombs, which are making a return. Sticky bombs are back, but they have said they're improving them. So there's a big high explosive sticky bomb, which of course you then manually detonate once you stuck it to the target. But there's also a rather awesome one for the, uh, you know, pyrotechnics out there a fire spreading sticky bomb which sticks to the enemy and then fire just spews out of it and if they're caught nearby other enemies they will set them on fire which uh, sounds equal parts awesome and painful. They also said they're going to be revamping the dark zone with a simpler rogue mechanic. They didn't necessarily go into that in too much detail at the moment. They may well of course share further information in the post show so if there are additional details I'll be sure to let you guys know in follow up videos but they do plan to streamline the rogue mechanic and they give us a hint at the end that hunters are back in Manhattan. Now I know for some of you guys of course if you saw the announcement or the kind of tease yesterday I myself was getting kind of hopeful I was like oh maybe they're going to announce they're bringing back survival. Alas they have not said that. Survival is still not returning at the moment. I mean I feel like they could do it maybe going back to New York maybe sets the foundation for that a little bit better honestly I don't know just yet but they did say the hunters will be back so uh in quite what capacity we don't know but uh definitely watch out for those because yeah they're uh they're they're always fun to deal with However, they also spoke about post-launch with seasonal support. So much like we've seen in many other games, of course, games go around these seasons. And whenever these seasons come around, they will have these reward passes. Seasons themselves will typically give you new targets to hunt down, new narrative content, global events, leagues, and weapons and gear to unlock. But then when you actually go into the seasons and you get your season passes, there will of course be the free reward track. And if you guys have played anything, you know, any of these kind of games, Dauntless, Fortnite, you know, you can name umpteen different games that have got those kind of reward passes and they're always split into two different tracks. You have the free track for everybody and in getting involved in that, it'll allow you to get apparel, it'll allow you to get equipment drops and resources. Meanwhile, if you go for the premium reward track, that will then give you more apparel, so more cosmetics, more equipment drops and more resources. So of course, that'll happen in every season, so that'll give you things to work towards. Now, of course, to tie in with this, episode three, as mentioned, the free update for the Division 2 that goes live tomorrow, that is actually the, technically speaking, the start of this. It'll basically tell the story of the return to New York. So while you won't be going back to New York, you go to Coney Island instead, Principally, it sets up what's going to be happening in March because that is when this big update drops. March the 3rd, 2020. So this year, in, you know, a little under a month, this is when the Warlords update is dropping. So that's a lot of stuff to jump into. And uh, honestly, a great time to jump back in for Division. If you guys have, you know, been lapsed and whatnot, you haven't necessarily played too much, then this does sound like a pretty exciting thing to jump into. Whether it kind of has huge long life, whether it's something that keeps you playing for a long time or whether it's something you just jump back in and, you know, work through the new content, get up to level 40 and, you know, play it for 40 hours. Either way, it's a chance to jump back in, explore New York, and I, for one, am definitely looking forward to diving back into this world. So, 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys have got any questions, by all means let me know in the comments down below. And of course, be sure to keep it locked because as and when we get closer to the release, I'll be keeping you guys up to date and we'll be uh, obviously doing some videos once it drops. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. I really hope you guys enjoyed that video. Remember to hit that subscribe button and also click on the little bell icon to turn on notifications so you don't miss my next upload. Also don't forget, you can check out 269 and Paradise Central streaming over on Twitch six days a week. You can find a link to the multi-stream in the description box down below. Be sure to drop by and get involved. Thanks again for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.